So today we're actually doing a response tutorial, but I think it'll be useful to everyone. We're going to see how we can read the jOptionPane.show input dialog values into an array. Now I'm going to be reading it to a string array. We can also do an integer array, and I might include that in this video. If not, I'll do it in a different video. So we're going to go ahead and get started first by defining our string array. As you can see, I've already created my class and my me main method. And then we imported the swing.jOptionPane so we can use the jOptionPane uh, uh, methods. All right, so let's get started. So string array, we'll name it values, equals new string of size 10. So, this, so we just created an array called values of size 10. So now we're going to go ahead and start our loop so we can read the values into the array. So we'll do four. We'll do a for loop. We'll do int i, so the starting index will be 0. And while i is less than 10, we're going to do i++. plus plus. All right? And now each time it goes through this loop, we want to do the following action. We want to assign values i. So it'll be at index i. We're going to assign it a jOptionPane.show input dialog. So whatever the user enters, here for this dialog is going to be input into the index i of the values array. So i, in initially it'll be 0, so values in, at index 0 will be whatever the first value is, and then the second value will be at index 1, so on and so forth. So we're going to do please enter a value for index, and we're going to go ahead and concatenate our i here, so the user knows what index they're entering at. So please enter a value for index 0. One, two, three, four. So it'll be a different dialog uh, input pane that shows up each time. All right. So that's pretty much how you read in the values into the array. Now for the second portion, we want to print the values out. Let's say we want to print out the first five values. There's two ways to to the, to do that. So the first way is to have a separate output dialog box show up each time. So we'll do that first. And for that, we're also going to use the for loop. Now, you can also use the while loop, but you'll have to uh, uh, basically create the variable in advance. So int i equals 0. And then while i is less than 5, and then you do i++ plus plus inside the loop each time. The for loop is just a little bit quicker, so I'll just do that. And it's a little bit better, actually more cleaner. So int i, again, equals 0. While i is less than 5, we're going to do i++. Plus plus. Each time we go into this loop, we're going to print out our uh, value. So we're going to be we're going to say j option pane dot show message dialog this time because we're not expecting any input for the, from the user for this. And the message we're going to print is value. And then we're going to do plus i plus 1. So we're doing i plus 1 because we want to say value 1 instead of value 0. Because i starts at 0, so it'll be like value 0 equals blah blah blah, value 1 equals blah blah blah, but we want to do value 1 equals blah blah blah, value 2 equals blah blah blah, just to make it a bit more user friendly because the user's not reading it from 0 to 9, the user's expecting it from 1 to 10. Right? For this we kept it i because technically it is index 0, so but you, you guys get the point. I'm just trying to include as much as I can in this. So we'll do value i plus 1. And we're going to do another plus sign. So we're concatenating here. Concatenating, however you say it. Like that. And then we're going to do plus values, whatever value as it is at that index. So this will print at values 0 is the number 5, where values one is the number 20, you know, whatever numbers we input. We are going to give it a test run, so we'll see how it works out. Now, the second way, and the way I prefer, is to actually put everything into one string together and then just print that string out to the, to the user. So to do that, we do need to define our string. So we're going to do top five values equals your first five values are so th here we're just initiating our string called type 5 values with this initial value. And then we're going to go ahead and do four, another for loop here instead of a while loop. I just like for loops better. 
and while i is less than 5. So we're basically printing the first 5 values here. That's why we did i is less than 5. And here we're going to add the first 5 values to our string and then print that string. So let's get started on that. While i is less than 5, if we have to finish this off here, i++ plus plus, we have to increment the i, right, or else we'll be stuck in a forever loop and our computer will probably crash. Okay. So we're going to do the following. So we're going to top five values. We're going to concatenate the user value in there. So our top five values equals values at index i. So the reason why I'm doing a plus sign here is because I'm not assigning the top five values a new value. Rather, I'm basically adding on to it with this. So that's why I put a space here actually. So it'll be your top, your first five values are space and then we're gonna concatenate values at index zero onto it. And as it goes through the loop, it'll be values at index zero, index one, index two, index three. So it'll put all five values into that string. Now it'll be kind of weird if we just leave it like this because it'll be like all the numbers will be next to each other. So if my, t if my first value is one and my second value is 23 and then 43. So you see it's printing everything together. That's how it'll print on the string on the screen. So we don't want that. So we're going to add another delimiter, uh, another uh, uh, portion of code here. It's going to say if I is less than four, so up until the the last number, right? We're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna concatenate within the the loop another value here, and it's gonna be a comma. Okay. So what that's saying is after it concatenates the first value, put a comma and a space. Then next time, again after the second value, put a comma and a space. So on and so forth. It just makes it much cleaner. And then after the loop is done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to print to our user. So we're going to do a show message dialog. We don't care about the parent component, but we do care about our, oh my god, why do I keep putting that? Okay, there we go, top five values. Okay, so th this will print the entire string that we created onto the screen for the user. So we're going to go ahead and give this program a test run or a run, rather. It's loading. Bear with me, guys. Okay, here we go. So please enter a value for index zero. We'll enter, just to keep track with it, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth value. All right? So now it's printing your value one is one, value two is two, value three is three, value four is four, value five is five, and Wait a second. What did I do wrong there? For int i, while well, i is less than zero, that was interesting. Oh my god, see what I did? So that's why you have to put a plus sign there. So that's good I made that mistake. You can see exactly what happened here. Now, that last one should have printed this entire string, but it didn't because up until the last number which was 5 we were assigning it the comma space instead of concatenating it so to concatenate we just have to add the plus sign here and let's run this again <laughs> here we go okay so we'll do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so 10 values so value 1 2 3 4 so you saw how it was printing it separately, and now here are our five values all together. Just to make it interesting, let me enter different values in there. So 12, 33, 40, 432, whatever, 87, blah, 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 boom, boom, okay, blah, um, okay, yeah, blah, okay, whatever. Okay, so here we go. So it's printing all the different values, and then all of them together here. So those are two different ways to print it. Now, really quickly. If you want to do an integer instead of instant instead of a string, you can actually do that right here. So you do integer, and we're going to call this a integer string. So we're basically changing our type of array into a integer array. Now this is giving us an error because the input from a input dialog is a string value, even if the user enters a number. So we have to actually parse it into an integer. So to do that, we do integer dot parse int and then we feed it a string value, which is gonna be our user's input. 
Now, of course, if you were writing something like like real, not just for testing, you'd want to put a some kind of, of a validation method in there to make sure that the user is in fact entering a integer, not a string, before you feed it to the integer.parseInt, or else your program will error out. Okay, so we're parsing that and we're feeding it into our values array. So now our values array is a integer. Now the rest of it is actually, you know, it's fine because when we're concatenating, it converts the integer into a string automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. So this is how you would read an integer values. So if you want to do math using those values in the array, you can do it really easily this way. So let's give it a run. Let's make sure this runs. So I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So you see, still prints. Wonderful. So that was pretty easy. Now, so I showed you kind of both the string and the integer. If you need a little bit more detailed explanation, let me know. But I think it was pretty clear as to how this worked out. Um, and everything looks good. Now, if you have initial questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And it would be great if you can subscribe to my channel and, uh, you know, share the video. And I'll see you guys next time.